One of those really important nutrients is, is nitrogen. So in our atmosphere, there's a really abundant supply of nitrogen. About three quarters of our atmosphere is, is nitrogen. About a fifth of it is oxygen. A little tiny bit is carbon dioxide, and then we've got some other gases that make up the rest. So plants themselves can't actually access that nitrogen. So where do they get it from? So first of all, um, when it rains, which it's raining a little bit at the moment, <laughs> um, the rain will dissolve nitrogen out of the atmosphere sphere and so some of the rainwater that ends up in the soil the plants can just go woohoo um, and suck that straight out of the soil water and it's really easy for them to get but often that's not enough nitrogen for them so what they do is that they they form well some plants not all plants can do this but plants that we call legumes can form relationships with a bacteria called rhizobia and the rhizobia sits within the soil uh, within the roots and forms this sort of um, this little environment where the plants give it sugars and energy to live and the rhizobia converts nitrogen from the air, um, fixes it, creates a storage for that and allows the plant to access that. So um, those plants, we've got lots of different plants in our systems around. In agriculture, often peas um, are a really important uh, legume. Um, we've got uh, are clovers often in pastures but even within Australian species there's lots of different plants that, that fix nitrogen so our acacias um, are really good at fixing nitrogen um, Hardenbergia is, is a, a beautiful plant with purple flowers that flowers in winter um, and that also helps to fix nitrogen in our system and so those plants as they fix nitrogen they create these stores in the soil and as those plants die that, that nitrogen gets released back into the system and is available for other plants to take that up. So what happens as a plant dies, um, we all see um, dead leaves and things that, that drop onto the ground or within the soil as roots are uh, sort of sloughed off and, and released into the soil. Other organisms will come in and start to break that down. So we've all found something at the back of the fridge that's looking pretty nasty and it's a really important process, not one that any of us want to be eating things at that point, um, but that is a decomposition process. So it's these little fungi and bacteria and other organisms that help to break down um, uh, organic matter or living organisms once they die. So earthworms are a really important part of that and all of these processes contribute to, to helping to share and recycle those nutrients around the system. So plants are one of the main um, organisms that, that takes, converts solar energy and, and helps to share that into our system and of course um, other organisms like um, our cells will eat some plants, maybe not these ones, they're not looking too appetising there but um, you know uh, our cows will, will graze on grass, convert that to meat for us, um, you know so we've got all of these processes where um, cows called herbivores will eat other plants, humans eat both plants and animals so we're omnivores Carnivores, we eat both. Um, we've got carnivores out there that just eat meat um, or other animals and of course detritivores or decomposers that, that help recycle all of those, those organisms once they die and, and re-release them. Um, so all of these processes create this really complex interacting life system that helps to cycle nutrients and, and energy around that system. But Plants aren't the only ones that contribute to this, um, this capture of energy and sharing it to the system. And here we've got a plant where we've got some other um, mosses and lichens and things growing in the bottom of the soil. Um, and uh, we often see out in more arid regions, we get crust, biological crust that form on the surface of the soil. And when it rains and there's enough moisture and the conditions are just right, they suddenly go green. And that process, so anywhere we see those green processes happening, we've got this really important process of photosynthesis and capturing energy and, and helping to build um, those, those, those um, really important parts of, of a life cycle process. Um, so what we've talked about so far is, is that solar energy, um, how the, the sun drives all of these processes, how we capture energy, how we take some really important nutrients out of the atmosphere into plants that we release oxygen and how we get some of those nutrients through really important um, collaborations or communities that form within the, the soil.